Okay, ready to go. Let's stop this. Okay, this is uh, CSS part four. Uh, we're done. We're done with the content. What we're going to do today is we're going to work on some examples, and we're going to pick four old exams. Uh, the exam two's got two questions. One's an XML question. One's a CSS question. These are going to be a CSS question from these four exams. Uh, this is sort of the title of them, so you can remember what they look like. And these are the dates they span a you know eight or nine year period here. Okay, so I've already got these loaded up, but you know you know how this works. So here's the syllabus. We're going all the way down here to the exams. These are all the final exams. Uh, so we are right here. Uh, so this is where this lecture will go. Is right here and. But we're still covering, notice we're still covering this CSS. This would be CSS part four right here. So I'm going to load that down. I got these things preloaded so we don't have to futz with them. We'll start off with uh, summer, excuse me, spring 2017. Uh, let's reload this page. Let's look at the content here. Uh, let's just go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and put the answer up here. This is called a crossword exam. What we're going to do is we're going to create this crossword puzzle from this text box right here. So this is a CSS absolute positioning question. Uh, this, uh, so let's sort of look at what it says. We've got our, we've got our standard data. We've got our form, our form data sitting over here in a text area, TA2, form 2. And this is the crossword puzzle. Okay, and it's, it's going to be 13 rows and 13 columns runs 169 squares but we're not going to do this with a table what we're going to do is we're going to lay down 169 div blocks uh, that that have all the appropriate pieces to go over here and get all of this data and create this crossword okay so Squares on the first row, these, these rows right here, have top is 0, then 20, then 40. In other words, we're going to make these little boxes right here, 20 by 20. Okay, so we got the background color set to white. We're going to use the uppercase version to get these, this data from what is in lowercase over here and do uppercase on our table. Uh, and so if some of these are going to be black and let's go look at, let's go look at the code well let's let's run it again first let's look at it again let's run it so we'll come down here we run it boom crossword puzzle appears okay so we'll go look at view source make the font bigger Second problem. Okay, so here's P2. All right, so we'll slide this over. We'll move this over a little bit so we can see the see the answer a little bit. Let's do that. Okay, so let's look at let's look at what we're going to do. Okay, well, first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the data, you know, out of the text here. When we sort of got this down, it's F F2 TA2. And we're going to split it up on the semicolons. Okay, so each each one of these strings, each one of these rows, is separated by a semicolon. And then there's data. And then there are these pound signs. And what the pound signs are, those, that's where we're going to put a black square. So we're going to so roll through this, right? Row after row after row after row. We're going to take this version of the string, which is text and pound signs, and lay them out like this. Now, this bigger box is a div, right, like this. Pixels are going to be 18 pixels wide, 18 by 18. Padding around it, we got 6, 1, 1, and 6. And a font size of 14. Okay, so that's the beginning of the div block. 
And then on the first row, we're going to add some additional things. We're going to add the value of top. So top's going to be zero here for all of these in this for this row. And that's going to be 20 for all of these in this row. And 40 for boom, 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 like that. 20, 20, 20, 20, all the way down. Then we're going to have a left, and th this one's going to start at zero, and then the next one's going to start at 20. We're going to roll along like that. So for squares that have a letter, in other words, every time you encounter something that's not a pound sign, not a pound sign, I'm going to set the background color to white. I'm going to uppercase it. Uh, if I get a black in other words, a pound sign here. I want to put a black square. I set the background color to black, right, like that. Put a pound sign at the end, right, like that. Put all 169 div blocks in P2 out. So they've got to be complete div blocks. So this is the beginning of the div block. Uh, don't write this string. You just assume you got this. This is the start of each one of the div blocks. And notice it's going to create something that looks like that. Position, absolute, solid black, zero margin. In other words, these things are just jam up together. Height and width of 18. Padding is 6116. One, so that's six pixels at the top. Right? Like that. Bond size is 14. So every one of the divs that's going down here, it's going to have this start. Then we're going to fix top. We're going to fix left. Right? And we're going to set the background color to uppercase in the case of letters. And we're going to set black ones in, in the case when they're not letters. Okay, so it looks like we've got a pretty simple case here. Looks like what we've got to do is, the first thing we've got to do is got to load this data up and, and find our 13 rows. And we're going to do some split somewhere. And then we're, then we're going to have to just you know, sort of make up 169 little div blocks and stick them into... P2 out. Sounds like a bunch of loops. Okay, but you, you've seen this structure before, but the, the difference is instead of making a table, we're going to make a table, sort of, but we're going to do it by making little squares and putting 169 little dip blocks on the page by absolutely positioning them on the page. Okay. So here's our, here's our code. Back over here, look at that. It's over here. All right, so we got the data. First thing we're going to have to do, and you've, we've done this like 100 times, is we're going to split that data on those semicolons and, and give me the 13 rows. Now here's the starting div. This is where all 169 div starts, right? Here's the end of the program. We know how, the, we know how it comes out, right? Okay, so we clearly, what we have to do is we have to walk down these strings, this big string, putting these things in the right places and setting top and left and all those other things that we need to set as we go along. But this is the same for all of the 169 squares. Okay, so it's pretty simple. We've got to be able to control rows and columns here. So we're going to make 13 rows and... 13 columns. Now normally when we've done this before we would have put our table tags up here We would have been worried about row tags and cell tags and ending cell tags. And notice there's none of that here. There's no table here. There is no table. This is all going to be done with absolute positioned div blocks that start like that. Okay. Row loop. Column loop. First thing we're going to do is for every time through this, this means we're going to go through this loop right here. This loop. 169 times. All right, so here's how all of them start. So the first thing we do is we add that to the beginning of the div block. Now I need to, to get what character, you know, this is. In other words, this character. Okay, so... It, so what I've got is I've got this this thing here split into into 13 lines. So I got to go get this character. We'll get the characters one at a time out of that string, which we know when we did the split, it's going to give us 13 rows of 13 characters. Okay, so we go look at the character. 
in that row. And notice that's that's our J loop. Excuse me, that there that's our row loop right here. J is the character at. All right, now get the character. Calculate the top value. Okay, so I is going to be 21 times the row number, and left value is going to be the column number times 21. So that's the top value, and that's the left value, and that's the character. Okay, so now we're going to add the top information. That there's the the CSS attribute, and Here's the top value we just calculated, and then I'll add the attribute left and the value we just calculated, px, semicolon, semicolon. Okay, so that adds 02. Now, if, now we're going to look at the character as we walk down that row. So if the character is a pound sign, what we want to do is set the color to be black. You know, put that character in the, as the contents of the div block. Otherwise, this is for letter, we're going to set the background color to white. We're going to take the character and we're going to convert it to uppercase in the div block, in the div block. Boom, bada boom, bada boom, bada boom, bada boom. 169 times. Oh, that's going to be a big long string. We get finished and we slam the big string into enter HTML uh, P2 out. Uh, there's no, nothing really much interesting about that. It's, it's a very similar problem to the midterm problems, except we aren't playing with tables now. We're still doing a little string manipulation, but our, our location issue is not to do this with a, with a string, but do it by abs, absolute positioning 169 little squares in space. Okay, so that's the reason I wanted to use this one is this sort of an example is there's, there's still something going on here. It's just the, just the display mechanism on the web page is just completely different doing it this way. Okay, let's kill that one. Okay, so the second one is we're going to deal hands of poker here. Let's go get the poker, the poker exam. This is the poker exam. And I got a poker table down here. Almost get this on the screen. There it is. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to deal four hands poker like that. Now, in case you've never played poker, poker is a card game where you you bet and gamble on. It's played in Las Vegas, and the most poker requires that you get five cards. So I'm on this little program is going to deal my five cards. Five cards to this person, five cards here, five cards here, five cards here. So if I reload it, run it again, boom, lays them all out. Okay, so here's the details of the question. Now, obviously, i got a deck of cards, so I've got 52 PNG images, represent the faces of the 52 cards like that so you'll notice if I, if I do this again I get a different set of cards are being randomly just drawn here okay so I got a global array named CN that has 20 elements this is where this is what I'm going to be using to pick my 20 cards further I have written this thing called 20 Okay, so what I, what I want to do is from, what I want to do is I want to have 20 random numbers between 1 and 52. In other words, I randomly want to reach up here and pick one of these things, right? And I want to pick up 20 of them, uh, and I, I don't want to pick the same card twice. Now, now I'm sampling without replacement. Okay, so that so rather than that's not the question here. I mean, what I'm going to assume is I wrote this little function called twenty, and what twenty does is when you call this function, it gives me twenty integers from one to from the range one to fifty two, and stores them in an array called cn. Twenty random integers between one and fifty-two. No integer occurs more than once. Smallest integer is one. Largest integer is fifty-two. We're not writing twenty. We're just going to use it to get this array of twenty elements that tell me which one of the fifty-two cards I'm going to lay down on the poker table here. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to write the the, uh, the function p1. 
using CNA created by 20. I'm going to display four poker hands of five cards each. Boom, four poker hands of five cards each. Arranged in a crossing pattern, like that. I also got these two arrays. This is called V start. This is vertically start. H start. This is the horizontal start. These are pixel positions on the poker table. Okay, this tells me where this hand, this first hand here, where is the top? And this tells me what the horizontal position of each card is. Well, let's, let's, let's do the tops first. V start, vertical start. Notice this is 10, about 10 pixels here, 60 for the second hand, 60 for that one, 110 for this one. Then I've got horizontal start. In other words, measuring from this side of the poker table to where the hand starts. So the first one is 210, the second one is 10, third one's 410. And the last one's 210, so they line up like that. Okay, so these are my top and left for each one of those rows. Okay, each of the five images have the same, in this, this row, have the same vertical position. And these, pick, these cards are going to be dealt 40 pixels apart. In other words, I'm going to start with these numbers right here, and then every time I lay down a card, I'm going to move over 40 pixels like that okay so starting with this I'm going to lay down z the, the random integers in CN0 through CN4 those are the numbers of those then C5 through 9 etc like that uh, each image is 48 pixels tall okay so here's what the program does starts off it executes 20 gets my 20 random numbers stored in the CN array it's going to create strings of 20 images that have position, top, and left. I'm going to set the source, in other words, the image name, and the height. Stick in a dev block. Deal the cards across the table. Okay. Now, the, 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 way, this is, the way this is going to have to, have to happen is we, we should probably be thinking about how we just want to do this at random, right? So... So let's look at this sort of how we how we're gonna how our loops are gonna work. So we know we're gonna have to deal 20 cards, right? And as we're dealing these cards, these these vertical and horizontal things are, are gonna change. So if if we look at these five cards right here, so they all have the same vertical position, which is 10 pixels from the top. And the horizontal position start at 210. So this is 210. They're going to be 40 pixels apart. So this one is going to be 250, 290, 330, 370. Okay, so for while, while I'm laying out these five, and then on the next one, I'm, notice I'm going to pick up a different thing. I, I've got a vertical start at 60 for this group. And I'm going to start at position 10. They're going to be the same. They're going to be 40 pixels apart. Boom, boom, boom. Lay them down. Then lay these down. And then lay these down. Okay, so I have, I have groups of five as I go through this. I'm going to go through this list one time. All right, so the rules are. So what I'm telling you is, first of all, you execute 20. Now create me 20 image tags with the style attributes of position, top, left, source, and height according to these rules. So I've got, I got clearly, I've got, I've got loops here. I've got to go through four different hands and inside of each hand, I had to do five things. All right, so let's go look at the code, at the answer. Well, I'm at a little bit larger. This is Here it is right here. And here's the function 20. We won't worry about that. Okay, so let me get, get this out of the way. Uh, 
okay call 20 okay that's gonna that's that's gonna give me my my 20 random sets of values okay here's the start array we've already seen that here's the start array like this right um loops two loops okay so i'm gonna do i'm gonna do four different hands right so here's my this is my loop for the hands and for each one of those i'm gonna deal five cards so this is my card loop got to do that five times and here's my image tag and here's the style and here's what i need to do and here's my change in height and here's my counter okay let's let's look at what we did so every hand something's going to change right what's particularly going to change is where we start everything vertically these four hands all have different starting points vertically and horizontally okay so as i go along the hands first thing i want to find out is they all start same vertical position the horizontal position this position this is this this one then this one then this one then this one so we get the horizontal position start now the vertical position is not going to change for these five cards and these five cards once i get it once i get the verticals here verticals stay the same in the in the hand i get the horizontal starting position but the horizontal position of the card is what is what moves it to the right so i'm going to change the horizontal position 40 times on every card i'm going to count my cards Just, okay empty string start it off four hands set the vertical set the beginning horizontal It'll be five cards this is what's fixed z index is two positions absolute value of top v with a px left is h with a px source name this is where i'm going to use my c right i'm going to go get the names of my images where the names of my images go Oh, here it is. <laughs> I'm creating it. It's the number plus PNG and the height's 48. Small wonder I couldn't find them. So this is real. This is this really shouldn't be here because I didn't really do that. I created them on the fly. On the fly means I created them as I went along. Okay, so there's there's the source name. One PNG, two PNG, three PNG, and then and the number in 20 tells me which one. Let's see it loaded up cn 20 loaded up cn set the horizontal move them down the page count the cards so i get the next one on the next line and it's c started at zero slam the answer into c out yeah pretty straightforward it's it's mostly two loops as usual we're making sort of rows and columns uh, but we're doing it all again with we we could have theoretically done this with a table uh, you know making cells and then having a bunch of blank cells but this is a whole lot easier and I think if we were going to start doing something with poker then um, you know we probably wouldn't want to try to do it in the table we'd probably want to do it this way okay let's kill this one all right <clears throat> third problem Uh, this is summer 2015, and what we're going to do is we're going to make some picture frames. Now, we, we did that the other day. We looked at some CSS stuff about that. Picture frames. All right. So we pick a picture. That's what we just saw. Right? We're going to put a picture frame on it. Driving the tractor. Here's the picture frame. Fun in the park with a nice picture frame okay all right so we also have I'll do this one more time here this background color right all right let's read the data the data to the left has form named f1 
a select box named S. It tells me which one of my images, right? With file names for values. My file. Three range sliders. It's going to let me set the red, green, and the blue for the background color. Set it to black. Ooh, like that. You set it to white. Like that. Or we can, you know, let's do some red, green, and make it sort of brownish. Whoops. I have to get a little lighter to do that. Purple still. I'm sure it looks like red and blue. Back off that. Yellow. Okay, color. RGB color. Okay, so what else I've got is uh, there are the file names, and we got three range sliders, and Okay, we got nine image file, and their sizes and locators are defined. So I've got this image file. Notice these are image files. These are making my frame. Like this. And here's the position I want to put those image files, width and height and name of the file. Right? So in the table, the nine image files, here's the nine image file names. There's sizes and location, and I got five values. I got where you want to put it on the top. Now, let's see, these all have the same tops in the rows. And the lefts all start in the same place in the columns. And then I have a height, 295. And then I had a file name. The file names of the image displayed. The five values for each of the nine images storing five nine elements arrays. These values of top, the values of left, the values of the width, the values of the height, and the values of the file name. All five of those are already made there. So we've got, notice we've got five parameters we're going to need. Top, left, width, height, and name of the file. Don't write these arrays. I've already written them for you. We're going to create this page on a fly. We've got three parts. Oh, we're going to create the whole page. Right? So here's the beginning of our page. And we're going to set the background color of the page using these values right here. The value of R, the value of G, and the value of blue. It's going to set our background color like that. Notice that's the opening body tag of the HTML page. <clears throat> and then I'm, I'm going to get the values of R, G, and B using these rules above. I want to set f1.r value, f1.g value, f1. It should be b right there, r, g, and b. And we got nine image strings. These are my image strings specifying the four style properties: top, left, width, height, and then the source attribute are file names. Now that's that's always true except for the fifth one. In other words, this. Okay, so the one in the middle, right, like this, is I'm going to get the file name out of this, right? Okay, what I do is I get, how I get that is I get the selected index value for these things, like this. I'll select one, then I get its value, and that's going to be the image file name, like that. Okay. Don't declare, don't initialize the arrays, assume they are, show me no HTML. I gotta look through and just load all this stuff up. So what we've really got is we're really gonna lay down nine images for absolute position, nine images on the page. And they all have top, left, width and height, and the name of an image file. Not not too difficult. Here's the opening thing, right? Here's where we're going to set the background color. Then we're going to go through and do this using all of these arrays. Okay, looks pretty simple. Looks like we got to loop through this thing. Got to do something nine times. Looks like we got to make nine different image tags once we once we get in there. Okay, so let's go look at let's go look at the answer view. 
source. Make it bigger. That's problem number one. Now let's run this and let's just okay so there's the name of there's the picture there's my background color and here are my five images this is one image two images and third image and this is an image and this is an image this corner down here is an image this bottom row is an image okay so those are those are those those weird files these these image files right here like this We saw we saw this picture framing operation earlier, right? And here's my arrays. Here's my top arrays and my left arrays and my width arrays and my height arrays. So that gives me all that gives me top, left, height, width, image source file name. Okay, now notice this one says get the file name from S. So S, S is the drop-down menu. Then we're going to get the values of R, G, and B. Okay, so we've got a couple of things to do, right? So let's go get um, what image did we choose. Okay, when you do this, it's going to tell me that. I told you that right down here. That's it. That's K. So I'm telling you how to do this one. Here's K. And I go and I go get the image name right here. So I told you how to do this. So you really don't start until we get here, right? So here is my beginning HTML tag, body tag. Now, next thing I need to do is set in this body tag. I'm going to do background color RGB. I got to get the values R, G, and B. All right. So I'm going to go out there and get those RGB values that my user has picked right, to set the background color of the page. Okay, so that's that's straight up HTML object model, document, dot name of the form, dot name of the text box, R, G, and B, like that. Go get them. Parse float. Let me see, convert two fix, give me two digits of precision. Then do a parse float, add that in there, and I get the RGB. And then notice I put a comma and a percent, like that. Now I want to make the image tags. So I've set the background color. So this, this whole thing is, is an HTML tag and a body tag with a background color set. That's all I've done. Now I'm going to make my nine image tags. So here's my loop for my image tags. Nine tags. Start off the image tags. I've got to put the value of top, left, width, and height. Like that. That's pretty simple. Now these, these are just my arrays that I've stored. This one. Okay, here's my top array. DP. Here's my left array. Here's my width array and the height array. And then, then I gotta get the name of the source file. Okay, so if these are my notice I did this numbering scheme here. The fourth one's the one in the middle. Okay, so if I'm in the middle, what I want to use is this image name. Okay, the image name I got right here. Otherwise, I want to use one of these names. Okay, so notice the one in the middle. I got to go get image name. I got that right here. Okay, so then I just now all I need to do then is make is make the image the image tag image name. Close that. Puts all the now, now I've got nine image nine image tags with position absolute top left width height and source big string stick the big string on the page I get that now it was a little bit of work to do this but 
that's okay. Let's go look at one more thing. If I can find where the image file names are. There we go. Here's the image file names right here. Okay. We didn't really need to see that. Now, you'll notice this, this is a little bit weird because what we had, we had to do several things here. We had we had to, you know, when we wrote out this web page, oh, you know, we on the fly wrote this thing out. Um, it looks a little bit different. The only thing we had to do in this one, we don't, we're not having, don't have a table here. We're just, we're just really, you know, writing a bunch of div blocks. Okay, so you're going to notice that. You're going to notice, you know, one of the big things about this exam is what I'm doing logically inside these programs is in some programs, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just creating a, a, a bunch of tags and I'm putting the tags on the page. That, that's one version of the truth. The other version of the truth is I've already got values on the page and I'm going to use the script to change those values. So you got to get your head around first. Big general question on the front end. Am I creating the tags or are the tags already there and I'm going to set or change property values? Two different approaches to fixing this. All right. That was summer. Okay. Last one. Persistent phone caller. Okay, we're going to deal a bunch of cards here. Well, looks like we're going to deal all 52 of them, right? Just like, weird, like this. Yeah, there we go. Reload the page. Wow, like that. Okay. Now this is very similar to the other problem. We just we're we're gonna deal all the cards, and we're gonna lay them out a little bit different. This should be a piece of cake after we've looked at the other one, right? Okay. So we start this thing with. Here's my uh, output div plot. There's there's my cards again. 1 PNG, 2 PNG, 3 and PNG. And I want to make a string called OS. It's got 52 image, four properties, top, left, width, position. Right? Now, I'm clearly going to go through and make position 52 of these images, right? So my loop's going to be Okay, so we're back from the phone call interruption. Okay, there's my 52 cards. All right, there's my 52 file names. The top for the first row is 5. Tops for the second row is 60. 55. Okay, I want 55 pixel change between the top every time. 55. Value of left, this is going to start off at 5 pixels over here. Then it's going to go to 46, 78, 128. So I'm going to have four values for left as I go across the columns. Um, every image is 36 pixels wide. Uh, they're all absolute. Uh, put the big string in the div. Wow, well, this is really, really simple. Okay, so set the background color of the div block to be gray. Set the height of the div to be 720. So if I look at this over here, I've got it's gray, big giant gray div block, 720 pixels tall. Boy, this is just 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 a plug and chug with loops here. This this is this is once you see about two or three of these things, you can sort of quit looking at them. All right, let's go look at the source. Get the 
si on veut. Okay, so this is problem number one. Yeah. All right, so what do we get? So we got this is really really short. Okay, so here's my row loop. Got thirteen rows. Here's my column loop. Here's my image. I got an image number, and I've got a value for left, and I got a value for width, and I got a value for top, and it's position absolute. Uh, this is just really simple. 13 rows, five columns. They all start on the left side at five. Inside the loop, I add 41 every time. Like that. Top starts at five. Every row, every time I'm in this row loop, right, it starts at five, then it changes to 55, right? So notice where this happens. So on the left, right, my left is being changed inside the interior loop. My top value is being changed at the end of my row loop. This is straight up, right? And so now this, notice this time we're going to create the whole tag, image source, image number. That's my counter right there, 1 PNG, 2 PNG, 3 PNG. And that's just, I'm just going to count that. That image number is just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on the source. Then I'm going to set the top. Top starts off at 5. Top gets changed on each row. Then I get the value of left on every row. The left value starts at 5, and the left value gets changed by 41 as I go across the row. Width is always 36. Position is always absolute. Count it. 52 times. Set the background color. Set the height. Stick the answer in. Not bad. Really pretty simple. Okay, so you, you'll notice that there's something consistent about when we're doing these things in loops that it doesn't really matter whether we're creating the image tags and putting brand new image tags on a page by using inner HTML or whether we're going to take image tags that are already there and we change them. Okay. Okay, so that gives us about, um, you know, four good problems to look at. So we'll end up on this, and uh, what we'll do is get in about a week or so when we get through with some other required topics, we'll come back up right before the exam, and we'll do a couple of more of these right at the end. So let's play this thing off here.